Hello and welcome to Natural Resources Investor, where we unearth opportunities. My name is Eric Bergsang, and today I'm very pleased to be joined by Robert Mensel, who is the CEO and Managing Director of Centrex Limited. Centrex Limited is listed on the ASX under the ticker CXM. Today, I'll be asking Robert about the company's recent $20 million capital injection, which included a $10 million funding package from National Australia Bank, its recent Stage 1.5 expansion update, and also the other market verticals that the company is pursuing. Now, before we begin, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to the channel for more. And without any further ado, let's get into the conversation with Robert. The equity really does a couple of things for us. I mean, obviously, it's a, it's a cash injection, and that helps us with some of our capital items and also with our um, working capital requirements as we ramp up and, and get bigger stockpiles. But the other thing it does do, it, it really does facilitate us getting a better debt package. And that was really one of the things that you know was hanging out there. If we got a bit more equity, we, w- we would have got a much better debt facility, and it's turned out to be true. The other thing that the debt does for us um, by getting it early it meant we could actually go and place some orders for long lead items be it some additional cyclones for the processing plant or the rooms as well and what that means is that you know as the rooms come online the additional cap expansion we can start moving the plant to to operating 24 hours around the clock so what we're expecting that by the end of april that that processing plant will be running continuously 24 7 and we think Probably soon after, we'll probably start running some of our night shift mining guys or running a night shift mining crew, primarily focused on, on waste. And then possibly as we ramp up later in the year, you might see that crushing plant going on to night shift as well. We'll see how we go. I mean, both the mining and the crushing look like we may not need to do it, but um, depends on where we went, went end up production wise. In summary, what the equity did for us, it enabled us to get a very good debt facility uh, and probably just as importantly, it enabled us to um, play some long lead order orders and also to make sure that we hit the time frame that we want to do, which is basically hitting 625 production by the end of this calendar year. And um, yeah, so far so good. We're, we're on track to do that. Yeah, we're obviously very pleased to get the NAV facility. You know, it, it's it's a great for a company of our size and 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 our commodity to actually have one of the big fours supporting us. I guess I can't really speak for for NAB, but they are, have been our bankers. I mean, they they have been seeing you know our ramp up. I guess you know obviously been encouraged by what they've seen. They have a good understanding of the business. You know, we've we've brought them along over the last eighteen months. The beauty of a big four, it's much more kind of vanilla debt. The you know the cost of money is considerably lower. Than than what we what we were looking at previously, and the beauty of some of this uh, vanilla debt or what is basically asset financing, it doesn't come with the, the the covenants or the review events that you would see typically in a more exotic debt facility. And in the scheme of things, it, you know, it just wasn't worth pursuing the the more exotic debt. That's a really good way to to um, place the company at risk. You know, if there's something was to happen that you can't control and um, yeah, I think this is a really good outcome for the company and and, uh, and all the shareholders. What most people don't understand is, you know, when you're a business like ourselves, and probably, you know, it's the same with an individual as well, you've got to start developing a bit of a, a credit rating. And so I guess, you know, in our, from our point of view, we had NAB, who, who we were using as our company banker. They, they saw us operating for, you know, that 80 months, two years. And we also had, you know, the EFA facility as well, um, which we show that, you know, we can, we can, um, we can handle the debt and, and repay that in an orderly fashion. And now, obviously, with this NAB facility, this you know, just under 10 million, it's another great way to demonstrate that we are a, a good client and that should serve us well for the future, no matter what we're going to do, be it um, you know, further expansions at Ardmore, be it um, you know, stage two, or be it uh, you know, phosphoric acid or, or, or other projects. So it is important to have that, that track record of, of having debt repaying it and uh you know and being meeting all the requirements yeah so you might have seen announcements come out recently on our stage 1.5 and what we do want to do is you know, really show the market that we're doing what we said we're going to do and i guess the other thing is really demonstrate that we're you know we are good project managers and, and good at good at uh, executing projects i think one of the key aspects for any good well i guess resource companies and make sure that 
you know, you can excise projects, you know, on budget, on schedule, on time. And so, you know, we're certainly putting a lot of effort into that. You know, we will keep the market informed. But really what you see in the schedules that's attached to that announcement is key things we've gone and we've, we've hit it straight away. So things like our uh, towers facility, you know, we're still using interim towers storage facilities. They're, they're a bit expensive, but, um, you know, uh, you have to remember this product that goes into those towers facilities, you know, we're actually selling that also as our amplifier product. So it's serving us quite well. You know, we are looking at a um, larger towers facility at some point, but we're still looking at other options on that as well. But the main thing is we, we have plenty of towers capacity in front of us. We've got, a, we've got a whole lot of approvals in the pipeline as well to keep that going. The other thing, and probably the most critical one at the moment, is expanding or doubling the size of our camp. And so we've now paid for all those rooms and, you know, we're expecting to start installing those, you know, commencing early next month. And as those rooms come online, um, we'll also, we'll also be able to go to night shift. And then the other thing is really getting, you know, um, what we call our critical spares for the plant. So these are, you know, we're very mindful that as a company, we've just got the one processing plant. And if that was to go down, well, well, you know, that stops, the money stops coming in. And so we really need to, you know, make sure we manage that very well. We've, we're doing regular condition monitoring on that plant. You know, we've got probably the best people in, in the in the industry doing that work for us. We have pretty good idea on how the plant's performing. Um, we have ordered and we're receiving, you know, what we call our critical spares or rotables that we can quickly swap out if we have a, a maintenance issue and keep our you know, really keep our plant um, availability up above that 95% where you want to be. So yeah, we're, you know, we're, we're making sure that uh, if we're a small company like us, we don't fall into one of those traps where um, something fails and, and, and you're offline for, for days or weeks. So they're the, they're the immediate things that are happening. Um, and I, I guess maybe just summarize that um, we've got plenty of towers ca capacity in front. So we can keep producing. We're, we're going to night shift as quickly as we can, and that will give us a significant increase. We've got our critical spares coming or arriving already, which gives us a bit more uh, uh, confidence in maintaining that availability. And then the next thing for us then is to, you know, literally double the size of our drying capacity to make sure that we can dry all this product as quickly as we produce it. You know, almost from the day we started, um, you know, a lot of people told us our product was almost too good to make uh, fertilizers. And what, what they mean by that is it's very, or it's relatively high grade, but very low in impurities. Um, and even as part of the feasibility study, some test work was done to look at making um, more value adding to that. So typically, you know, not just SSP, but you know, phosphoric acid or um, mono or dicalcium di phosphates. Um, so yeah, we're very mindful of that. So I can tell you, we're doing a couple of things. So obviously, Prayon uh, have done all that test work more recently on the product that's actually come out of the plant, rather than the um, rather than the uh, the drill hole data, uh, drill hole samples. You know, the, the results we've seen to date have been very encouraging. You know, we're getting a very uh, what's called a very um, strong weak acid <laughs> as initial as initial product, and that's important because it reduces the amount of energy you need to to. To concentrate that up we're seeing you know low impurities but we're also looking at a whole range of other things where we have been doing some test work you know, with another company to look at things like monocalcium and dicalcium phosphate and you know that's a good way to go and one of the reasons why you know phos acid and um and and these other products are of interest to us is because it's probably even a better utilization of our total resource and what i mean by that is um you know you might find your high grade product goes to the ssp plant but your lower grade product um, you know, is just as well suited to putting into a phosphate plant or, or a monocalcium or dicalcium phosphate plant. Um, and I can tell you, you know, we're looking at our resource models again. We're, we're looking at trying to make them a bit more granular. Uh, and so we can actually start seeing, okay, if we did have a phosphate plant, you know, how many times would we have to, that would go there? And we're obviously mindful of, um, you know, of other opportunities around us as well and, and what that would look like to, to feed a plant. Um, but yeah, certainly, you know, once we get stage 1.5 out of the way um, and we get a bit more a bit more cash, we'll, we'll progress that a bit faster. But, you know, um, the market we're looking at initially is to replace imports into Australia, which is, you know, high, high purity phosphoric acid is fully imported into Australia. So we're looking to, to, you know, gain part of that market. But then, of course, you know, others are interested and in talk to us. There's a lot of phosphoric acid production in the world, but most of it's sitting in China. And so a lot of other companies are looking to, to get access to phosphoric acid from outside of China.